How are you coping with the? Um, are you doing the, the the shows online now, or because obviously you, you know we don't know when you're going to be able to go out live again, do we? Yeah, I mean it's um yeah I mean I'm just doing all my online stuff has not changed much. It just changed in the sense that like you know a lot of the studios I used to go to I I can't go to any of them anymore. So everything is just completely remote. Uh, you know, like like this, like everything's just via Zoom or Skype. And then, you know, I mean, get your news on with Ron. I've always just kind of run that out of my apartment. So that hasn't changed at all. That's still totally the same. But um, touring is, yeah, I mean, we we have gutted all of our 2020 plans. We're trying to reschedule for next year. And, you know, it hurts and I miss it. You know, it's like, got to be in your just, blood, hasn't it, Ron, if you're a road comic? It is. Comment. It's in your blood. I mean, I've been I've been touring for 10 years. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been a comedian for a while now. And, you know, I, I kind of got on the road as quick as I could. And, and so, you know, I did it full time for five years. And then I did it, you know, at least, you know, around a week a month for most of my most of my adult life at this point. And, and so, yeah, it's very weird. I mean, we do shows on Zoom, like stand up style shows on Zoom. Uh, Graham Elwood and I do. It's fun. It's not quite the same, but it is fun. And, um, you know, so that's something. But, um, you know, yeah, I, I miss the road. I what don't was... miss the traveling part of it, but I do miss, you know, going to different cities, doing what... the shows, meeting people. What was the first experience like, Ron? Because I've, I've thought about this. We, we talked a little bit about this the, the last time we spoke. And, you know, I've thought about doing you know a, a sketch and stand up what, what was it what was it like the first time you wrote like a sketch down and got up there and performed it in front of people well it was kind of overwhelming because my very first time i was pretty bad i didn't really get any laughs because I, I had no idea what i was doing and then like my second time i got a lot of laughs which is which is kind of typical it's not uncommon for somebody the most common story that you hear is like someone goes up for the first time and they just have a really good set and they get a lot of laughs and then they just bomb relentlessly for eight months yeah. uh, or a year in some cases. And uh, for me, it was like the first time I bombed royally. But then the second time I, I did really good. And then I bombed for like a year. <laughs> like It's just um, but, you know, when you start out, it's like you write these jokes and you just um, you have no idea how to write a joke in most cases. Uh, you don't really know what your rhythm is. Like you don't know any of that stuff because you don't find out until you do it in front of an audience and see it firsthand. So you just kind of go up there and it's just a lot of trial and error. Um, but when something connects, it's just this amazing feeling because you're just seeing this instantaneous reward for your labor. And you're realizing, oh shit, that's a funny joke that I wrote. And you might tell you know, five or six jokes in like a short open mic set and maybe four of them bomb royally, but then one of them gets this big pop and you're like, I got one funny joke. Well, guess what? You know, if you get about 30 or 40 funny jokes, well then get, you got a set. Yeah. Um, and so that's why people keep doing it. And that's why it's like, you know, I mean, it takes a long time to like kind of work your way up the ladder but it's it's a lot of fun. And, and, you know, one of the best pieces of advice I was ever given was like, you know, um, a headliner came to town. It's actually a guy who's still active, a comedian named Augie Smith. He's really funny. But uh, he was uh, headlining at this club and I was still a new comic. I was I was an MC, which is like the uh, you know, it's like the lower actually in your country. Uh, the MC is like the it goes uh, feature is what it's called. And then MC and then headliner and the and the headliner and the MC are kind of almost an equal position. Like the headliner mm -hmm. still the biggest position for like the most established comic, but the MC is close to the headliner. That's what it's like in your country. Uh, in the United States, it's the other way around. It goes MC and then feature and then headliner. Uh, I won't get into all the gritty detail because it, it would probably be boring, but like, um, I was the MC, which is the lowest rung. And then Augie was the headliner. And so I was like asking advice and, and he said, you know what, man, really enjoy right now. Cause this is when it's a lot of fun when you're just like developing material and you're going up and you're getting up like every night and you're just, you're hanging out with other comics in the scene and you're just enjoying it. 
just enjoy right now because it, it doesn't you know it it's yeah it, it doesn't like he actually said like it gets less fun I think he actually said that which you know it, to an extent I see what he's talking about but but that's the truth it's like starting out it's a lot of fun because your only responsibility is to just try to be funny up there yeah and try to figure out how to be funny up there you know once you reach a point where it's like okay this is how I pay my bills, it changes a little bit because then it's like, well, I have this show that I need to be uh, worried about. I need to make sure the show is going in a certain direction. I need to make sure that my stand-up set is at a certain point and I need to make sure that I hit these markets and I need to make sure that I don't oversaturate this town or that town. Um, and I, I guess for lack of a better way to put it, it feels like more of a job in some ways. That doesn't mean it's not still fun. I, I, I love what I do. It's a freaking blast. Um, but it's a little more like, um, you know, it's not quite when you're just in a community of your peers kind of getting stoned and trying to figure out what's funny. You've, that never, still worked, you've never worked a day in your life, really, have you? <laughs> <laughs> you you've just in enjoyed every I moment. I'm a lucky guy. In many ways, I've not. I'm a very lucky guy. Uh, I mean, I've had tons of day jobs over the years. Um, you know, I had tons and tons of goofy day jobs, you know, to just kind of make ends meet. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, th those early days, uh, they're a blast and you don't have to be in your twenties when that happens. There's some people, they start, you know, much later in life. Some people start when they're teenagers. Um, but you know, th those first years when you're really trying to figure out what exactly you're doing up there, uh, they're a blast and they're special and you can't recreate them. I still get that feeling when a new bit connects. When I try out a new bit um, and it connects and I'm like, oh shit, I got a new chunk. You know, I still get a high from that. But yeah, it's not quite like when you just reach a threshold and you do 20 minutes for the first time. I mean, it's it's just, it's a, you know, I mean, hey man, Jerry Seinfeld said it and, and I think it's just the best way to put it. it. It's a special thing. It just is. So... Well, uh, I'm, uh, I might I might try it. So you might get an email from me soon asking yeah, asking, for, asking for some pointers. When, when do you think it will? When do you think it's going to come back for you? It's going to be. Do you think it's going to be next year before you, you're going to be able to yeah. go out? I think there's going to be. Well, there's still. I mean, and this speaks to how we're not doing anything right in the United States. <laughs> some of it's back now. I mean, right now there is some like some comedy clubs are open, which I don't think they should be. I think any type of live performance should be limited to something outdoors and with a lot of open space and social distancing at most. At Dave most. Chappelle had it right, didn't he? Did he do an outdoor thing or did he? He did, he did, a, he did one 846 on Netflix for the George Floyd thing and he did it outdoor in yeah. his, uh, if I remember right, yeah, he's, he's big with his community, isn't he, Dave Chappelle? He's actually a bit really active in his community, and they had like marquees out and whatever. And he did that that set on Ag Forty Six. If you haven't seen it, yeah, watch it. It's brilliant. He's, he's, no, he's... I, I've heard that. I still haven't watched it, but I know I need to do that. Um, yeah, that's the way to do it right now. And in outdoors is not conducive for comedy. It's just not. No, but you need the walls and the room, face... don't you? The you atmosphere. Do, you do, but. But you you adapt, you know, and you do your best. I mean, I've done outdoor shows before. We all have. So, you know, right now, I mean, the one thing I am trying to potentially do a little bit of in 2020 is um, sometimes I do house shows. It's something that I've done even before the pandemic. So, you know, I'm kind of putting some feelers out there. Does someone have like a big yard where, it, where there could be like a socially distanced show? And I'm looking into maybe doing some of those in the area. Um, you know, if we can all, you know, everyone wears a mask, everyone social distances, you know, we'll see, maybe that'll happen a little later, like later this summer. Um, but you know, I mean, comedy clubs, they should not be open right now. And I think that, I think it's going to be about a year. Cause even, even as some places are able to open other places still aren't. So it's like, if you're a touring performer, like, what are you going to do? Like go to Boston, but skip New York or go to Atlanta, but skip, you know, whatever. I'm, yeah. I'm just naming cities. I'm not basing this off of any statistics or I anything, know but, but you know what I mean? So I think it's, I'm hoping next year, our goal, my Graham and mine's goal is we're hoping next summer we'll be able to hit the road again. That's our goal. I, I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to be like, you know, they've got a, 
until they've got a vaccine or something like that. I mean, yeah. um, you know, and the, the, these things usually, they say, take 12 to 18 months. So I'm assuming it's going to be next year for us as well. Although they've, they, you know, they've, they've started opening things up. They're opening, I think the day after tomorrow, hairdressers open up, which is fantastic yeah. for me because I can finally get this cut. It's, I've yeah, already, cut, hey I've already I'm, cut it I'm, once I'm... myself. <laughs> we we actually hairdressers are already open here because again we've just not we we opened too soon but um i haven't gone yet i'm i, I want to go soon and you know I, I know they're trying to you know they're being very sanitary they're only taking so many appointments people are wearing masks so they're doing their best but i still have not gone yet but you I gotta be go you gotta be careful one man you just yeah. you know especially especially if uh, i mean uh, I've got some elderly people in my family and, and you know, people who, who have just had operations and uh, there's a friend of the family that died of COVID who just had an operation. He was my age. Um, my friend's mom died died of it. Um, so, and obviously you just don't know whether it, it could hit you hard because, you know, there were all sorts of people who were fit in their 30s and, and you know, it, they don't make it as a result of it. So you never know. It's really scary. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that saner heads are going to prevail over there and you end up stopping this surge that has happened. I hope so too. I really do, and I, I hope that you all come together and, you know, at least something's got to happen over there with regards to the, the president. I mean, you know, with regards, because this is not, this is just a farce. It's, it's South Park level. It really is. Yeah, yeah it, it really is. The, the, you know, I, the, the, I mean, it, I... if they wrote it as South Park, you would, you would turn the episode off and just go, okay, you've gone too that's far too now. Much. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like one of those, like truth is stranger than fiction. Because it's like, I mean, I, I was always saying, I was like, you couldn't, you couldn't pitch this year as a movie. No one will buy it. They'd be like, this is just too far fetched. Come on, martial law and a pandemic. Are you kidding me? No, no, they, they, nobody will believe this. Switch it off. Clueless. Come on, come on. The only thing standing in the way of four more years for Trump is Joe Biden. Come on, come on. You got Hey, be listen, you Ron. Gotta... It's like I, it's like I said, the presidential race, the race in America this year is going to be between a man who, you know, half the time when he opens his mouth, he's lying, and the other half the time you can't make any sense of him. Who has got a history of ripping people off and fraud? Who's got a history of sexual allegations, even rape against him? And his opponent is going to be Donald Trump for the yep. election this year. Yep. Um. Oh, God help us all, mate. God help us all. Is there anything you wanted to talk about before I, uh, before we wind wound up? It's, we've talked about quite a bit. Is there anything I've missed? I think we covered a lot of ground. Uh, yeah, we 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 definitely covered a lot of ground, man. I um, you know, thanks so much for thinking of me for one. I know this is a new podcast. So Are you I, kidding, I, man? I, it's, uh, thanks so much for coming on and giving me your time. No, oh, no problem, man. I'm I'm flattered to be one of the early guests, man. This is really cool, and uh, yeah, I always love talking to you. I mean, I, you know, I. I uh, I was hoping that 2021 I was going to be touring your neck of the woods, but it, it looks like things are going to be pushed back a good bit. But when when we do have a vaccine for this and when the world starts to, you know, heal, I uh, England, I, I can't wait to get back there. I, I can't wait. I mean, I've never been there like to tour. I've been there on vacation, but I really want to start touring over there more. And I, I can't wait to get back over there and, and do some heavy touring. So, well, if you do, if you do come over here, yeah, may, maybe you can, you'll give me the confidence to break my cherry and I'll go up first time and do my first ever set. Hey you, man, I'll one? hold you to it. I'll hold you to it. Get started. Start once things open back up, get yourself to, uh, to an open mic, start doing the thing. And, uh, yeah. So by the time we get over there, you, uh, you, you, you can, uh, you'll be on the bill. Ron Pican. Thanks very much, buddy. Take care, everyone.